this point, um, I'd like for you, sir, um, to introduce yourself and uh, provide your DSC number for the record. My name is uh, Giovanni High Street, and my DOC number is 506411. All right. Let me explain the process that we're going to follow today. I'm going to read some information from the file and um, ask you to verify it. And then we're going to do our uh, role interview. Your case has been assigned to Mr. Prater, so he's going to take the lead on the interview. Um, after that, we're going to allow some public in, uh, input and comment. Um, and then we will... Um, allow you to make a statement, and then we will be voting. So let me see if um, we can go through your information. Mr. Giovanni High Street, you're a uh, first class offender. You're currently serving a 40 year sentence on the crime of manslaughter. You have a parole eligibility date of October 17, 2024, a uh, full time date of 10, 18, 2044. Uh, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Prater to begin our questioning. Uh, good morning, Mr. High Street. Morning. Uh, okay, I want to go over just a few facts so that I make sure that I understand what's going on here. Uh, on October the 17th of 2004, roughly 20 years ago, you stabbed Esmeraldo uh, Valdez. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and I noticed uh, in reading the report that there were a number of, of other cut marks and bruises and, and uh, signs of abuse on her. Did those come from you also? Yes, sir. We was, uh, we was uh, uh, arguing and fighting at the time. Okay. And then uh, you were charged originally with second degree, but you pled to a reduced charge of manslaughter, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Every time. Go ahead. Uh, so. Oh, uh, uh, against the advice of my lawyer, I I, I took a uh, I took a uh, plea of manslaughter because every time we went to court, uh, it kept getting postponed and postponed. My family and her family would uh, argue over the child, so I just wanted to to finish to get it over with. Okay, all right, and uh, I noticed also that that I believe it was in nineteen ninety nine. Also, you were charged with domestic violence. Is that correct? Yes, sir. But that charge was ultimately uh, released or, or dismissed. Yes, sir. Okay, and that was against that was the same lady had complained on you roughly five years earlier. Correct. Yes, and y'all live y'all live together. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. On that domestic, how much? I guess what in my mind, and I know that you don't have to answer this because I can't prove it or disprove it, but between 99 and 2004, the number of times that, that there were problems when she may have been uh, abused or mistreated, and I was just curious about that. Uh, did y'all have an ongoing problem with, with your relationship? Uh, not really ongoing. It was... It was it was just like just spur the moment stuff, I guess. Okay. All right. So you serve roughly half of your sentence at this point. And uh all right, I noticed that the uh the DA and the sheriff and a number of victims want to keep you in jail. And uh and I think some of them are gonna speak here in a few minutes. Uh let's see. And the other thing that concerned me was the length of time when she was still alive, but you didn't call for an ambulance or anything like that for a couple of hours. Why? Yeah. Uh, shock, I guess. Couldn't believe it actually happened. Okay. Okay, that, that's all the questions I have. But well, one more thing. I did notice that you have gotten your high school diploma. Uh, I couldn't find but one write-up, I think, if, if if I'm not mistaken. Have you been written up a lot? Is that correct, Lord? Yes, one time he has. Okay. It was a, a different facility, but that's in his record, yes. Okay. And you've had many certificates and classes and courses that you've taken, and I want to congratulate you on trying to be make yourself a better person. Um, why you've been incarcerated. So I want to tell you, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, 
That's all I got. Mr. Kerman. Okay. Um, did y'all have any children together? I thought I yes. heard you mention that at the beginning. Yes, sir. One daughter. One daughter. How old is she? Uh, now she's 22. At and the time. Did she have any contact with you? Uh, we've we, uh, we've communicated um, twice over email. So you don't don't have any personal contact. Okay. No. All right. Um. That's all the questions I have. Huh. Who's in the custody of the child in right now? Uh, uh, the grandmother. Okay, thank you. Warden Beckham, um, would you like to uh, make a statement right now on this offender? Um, yes, ma'am. His record pretty much speaks for itself. He's had that one write up. Um, he is a, a trustee and a pride member here, but that's really the rest of his record speaks for itself. The one write-up kind of concerns me because um, you were at the state police barracks. Is that correct, Mr. Yes, yes ma'am. And that's that's considered the cream of the crop right there. Yes. You were, uh, you were involved in an altercation and removed from that location. Yes, ma'am. Did you have any kind of um, punishment other than being removed from that facility? No, ma'am. time or anything? No. Uh, the other, well, oh, uh, you broke they, up. Huh? That's, that's not accurate. You did have lost a good time. Oh, yes. I, yes. I, I couldn't understand what you're just, just breaking up a little. Uh, um, the a person involved in that altercation with you, were they removed from uh, the barracks as well? Yes, ma'am. So you both were removed? Yes, ma'am. It's uh, no tolerance. All, uh, no tolerance. So everybody was removed. That, that uh, has something to do with it. Today we have um, several members um, of the victim's family who um, are here in opposition. I'm going to read their names. Um, yeah, I'll go first. Yeah. Okay. So. First of all, we'll go to uh, Carrie Myers then. Carrie is with the uh, Parole Project, and they are in support and, um, following this case. So, uh, Mr. Myers, if you'll introduce yourself and um, and, and provide the information you wish. To say. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, Carrie Myers with the Louisiana Parole Project. Uh, we're here uh, in support of, of Mr. High Street. We believe... Uh, looking at his record, he has demonstrated um, remorse and rehabilitation. He has worked very hard uh, during this 20 years of incarceration. What we know is as people reach his, his age and, with, and display the type of records that he has, uh, they're very unlikely to, uh, to, to reoffend. Uh, it Should he be released and come to parole project, while in our program, we'll, first thing he'll have is, a, is an assessment. Uh, through our, our social worker, um, and she will assess for for any any recommended uh, treatments or programs. Uh, not that uh, in this case that that's necessarily uh, relevant, but that's one of the first things that'll happen. Um, he will also twenty years in prison is is away from society uh, is certainly um, a, a a difference different time uh, uh, different culture that, that he'll be returning to. We will uh, provide him with that necessary support and reentry services. We'll make sure he's connected to his health care. We'll make sure he is um, he's going to be tutored and mentored in technology, uh, in finance. Um, we'll make sure he's un he understands social norms um, and and goal setting. Um, for all project, uh, we'll give him the full complement of our services while he's in residence with us. Once he leaves us. He does have a, a stable residential plan with his mother. Um, and so we ask this board to just consider all the factors here, uh, his record of rehabilitation, his conduct record while incarcerated, uh, and grant his parole today. Okay. I, I do have one question, Mr. Myers. How long um, have you been involved with um, Mr. High Street uh, evaluating him for placement program? Uh, for the last five months. Five months. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Byers? Um, at this time, 
Thank you so much, um, Mr. Myers, for your input. At this time, we'll go ahead and I'm going to list the um, members of the family in opposition uh, to parole today, and we will allow uh, three of them to make a short statement, three minutes or less. So today we have Anthony Rodriguez, the victim's brother, Dora Valdez, victim's mother, Annalise High Street, the victim's daughter, uh, Francisca Valdez, the victim's brother, Maria Rodriguez, the victim's um, son-in-law, or daughter-in-law, yes. <laughs> Gabriela Garcia, family member, Ruby Valdez, sister, Lily Beth Rodriguez, sister, and Selena Sanez, um, the victim's uh, sister-in-law. Um, we're gonna go ahead and ask Dora uh, Valdez to speak first. Naomi, if you'll just go to the podium. Dear members of the Palomar Board, I'm your big mother who has been on the long road of every lady with daughter is my mother of days. Being tragically taken as you read this, I pray you understand that losing your child is inexplicable heartbreak, tragedy that should not happen to any mother. No mother deserves to suffer this way. It is difficult to put into words how the weight of all it has been so suffocating, so crushing, devastating, and you're shattering in every way possible. There is no single day that goes by when my daughter is not in my mind. I cry myself to sleep almost every night because of how much I miss her and long to see her face or hear her voice again. I would trade it all for just one more moment with my daughter. If I could, I could give every ounce of me to save every ounce of her, 1,000 times over. No matter how many years lurk over my shoulder, there is not a single day that passes by that I'm not missing my daughter. I have three for 19 years and I was will. This monster stripped away myself with layer by layer until there was nothing left but an empty shell. The self that exactly was before no longer is. He succeeded in making any mother's worst nightmare come true to bear the unbearable. My days are filled with anguish and sorrow because I have not learned to live with the pain, the emptiness, and the suffering it has caused me. Life without my daughter has become stagnant. I have struggled with the sadness. I don't know existed. My world has been turned upside down. It's hard to see clearly sometimes because of the tears, the anger, the frustration, and the depression. I now suffer from panic attacks because of the fear and anxiety this man has inflicted with me. I am still haunted by that dreadful agonizing phone call that sent me to the emergency room after being told that my daughter was gone. There are days when I still feel paralyzed. I began to feel the same sickening come over me while opening the letter of the parole hearing. My daughter was met out that was a beautiful soul who trusted without a question and love without reservation. She was open, honest, and alive, but not anymore. Her day was not quick and painted. He was agonizing, slow, and merciless. She did not just pass away. She was murdered, unconsciously beaten by the man she loved, threatened by his worst anger and rage. She endured his cr cruelty, abuse, and manipulation, killed by an evil thing she couldn't see or comprehend it. Losing my daughter was by far the hardest thing I had ever experienced. The second hardest was raising my granddaughter, knowing that one day I would need to explain to her that person responsible for mom not coming to home was because of her own father had done. I tried saving my daughter's home by paying the mortgage on it for an entire year after she had. My hope was this to get sold that the proceed can be left to my mm -hmm. granddaughter, Anna Lacey. Unfortunately, the defense refused to sign over the sale of the house so that this daughter, daughter can be benefited. As a result of this, I eventually had to give up paying on it and let go of the financial impact it was causing. Given that my daughter's gonna have the luxury to come back home, I don't feel that this man should be given the luxury to return to his home early either. It is just not fair or just a book. Therefore, I'm against the parole and protesting the funder early release. Thank you for your attention to this matter. I trust that the parole board will find the safety and well-being of the community in reaching just an informed decision. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I know that's difficult. We appreciate your words. Um, now we're going to ask um, on Alexis High Street um, to speak and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Alexis High Street. I have um, my Aunt Marie here in support of um, So, um, I'm in Esmeralda, the victim's surviving daughter. Um, I wish I could have gotten the opportunity to look up the description of my mother, but I was never given the possibility due to the heinous description. Um, due to the heinous description. To my knowledge, my mother was filled with the overflow of selflessness. Benevolence and love, sorry. My mother would have given anyone closer to the shirt off her back without thought. As she entered the room, she immediately radiated with a positive light. Throughout the agonizing years of my youth, I have prayed every day that maybe I might make wake up one day with a normal child. Following the crimes of Johnny, I was a helpless child left behind without parents at the age of two years old. I was forced experienced deep loneliness as I lived my life without a measuring mother. Thankfully, my mother imparted a loving family and the community of this family when they raised me on their own. My grandmother was my primary caretaker throughout the development of my life. My mother was considered the matriarch of this family. And unfortunately, this tragedy severed relations and it's been that has not used to this day. Given the intensity of this crime, I do not think Giovanni deserves to rule. If the offender is released, I fear for the safety of me and my family. He took my mother's short life and attempted to harm, if not murder, murder her siblings. How can I feel safe and forgiving around a world of hurt made in a lot of spare hands? It's tragedy. I was not especially premeditated. And he had a prior history of domestic violence with my mother and in previous significant others. This removes the possibility of the water source family and friends to real the most people. Painful time of our lives. And the thought that my mother's murder could walk free is cut wrenching. I'm aware that his mother lives close to my permanent residence, which is also my grandmother's home. This adds another layer of fear because he is all of where I live. Even though he is my father, I would not be able to recognize him if he approached me. I've had no contact with him for 20 years. In the two years that I did, I never even spoke my first words. So I've never have been in contact with him, maybe. Uh, from like my sister or someone from afar, but I never directly spoke to him. Um, and no matter how many years have passed, I'm reminded every day that I experienced a child's worst nightmare growing up without parents. I simply despise my legal last name because it derives from this evil intention man. I'm forced to deal with the agony every day, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't long for a mother present during my life, especially during important milestones that a normal child will have their parents attend. My mom and I were both robbed of a fulfilling life, and it deeply obsessed me when I even began to think of the that she had to endure before leaving this world. As the voice of my mother, I come forth today to beg for the denial of early release as long as the law allows. She no longer has a life on earth, but I aspire to continue her legacy in our family and the community. Releasing this offender will put every single living in that person I truly would not be safe if he was given freedom. My mother I could get the opportunity to live her life the first day, so I should be. I wish I was fortunate enough to say goodbye, or at least know how it feels to embrace a mother's arms, at least now. I do not believe that I would justify if there is another chance given in life, and my mother is not fortunate, fortunate enough for that second chance. Therefore, I'm strongly yeah. opposed to the offenders. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, the final person speaking will be uh, Ruby Valdez. Good morning. I'm writing to express. My name is Ruby Valdez. I am the victim of Mr. High Street's heinous acts committed on October 17, 2004. I am the, I am the sister of the deceased Esmeralda Valdez whose life was cut short at the age of 32. Not only did he take a life a beautiful so that day, but he took away a sister, a daughter, a mom, an aunt, a mentor, a pillar to her family and community. 
No matter how many stories we share about my sister and her daughter and Alexis, who was robbed of her mother at the young age of two, her daughter will never get to experience a hug from her mom. See her face, her smile, hear her say, I love you, take her to prom, dress shopping, plan a wedding, or get to experience any milestone in her life with her mom. Why? Because she was struck to death the day the offender decided to commit this horrific crime. Still today, I am haunted and traumatized by what he did. In addition to taking her life that day, he planned to take my life as well. He was an adult who knew exactly what he was doing. He bragged about how my mother would soon pay during a family party the day before. <clears throat> this was not an act of the heat of the moment. This was all premeditated. He even said his goodbye to his two-year-old daughter that afternoon, letting her know that he would not be seeing her in a long time. No one had a clue of why he was putting up a show suddenly. My sister was murdered by a man at 4 a.m. At 8 a.m., four hours later, I received a phone call from him calmly asking me to come over because he claimed that my sister wanted to talk to me. And she wanted me to come over because she, he said that she wanted to chat with me. Showing absolutely no remorse of what he had done, he then continued to call every 30 minutes after until he successfully lured me into such a violent, gruesome sight. Not only had I walked into the wine's den to face a man that had been completely overtaken by pure evil, but I saw what no person should ever have to witness or experience in their life. I saw the lifeless body of an unrecognizable sister lying there helpless. I must, re I must relive that eerie day over and over in my head because no matter what I do, I hope I think nothing has succeeded in removing the horrid scene out of my head. This is not the first time that he had hurt her. He had struck her badly once before after her face was bruised due to the offender not being able to control his short temper. He has had a history of acts of violence in previous relationships with the mother of his older kids as well. As a result of losing my sister that day, the pillar to our family, the glue that once held this family together, this has caused my family to come crumbling down. We are all still broken, shattered to pieces, and have all scattered throughout the country since she has been gone. He tore this family apart. This tragedy has affected us in every aspect, spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Even on days where we can craft up a smile, the pain is just beneath the surface. We will not wake up one day with everything okay and life back to normal. They say time heals all wounds, but yet I have yet to, to know what that feels like. I have carried this pain each day ever since. I am here today to protest To fight for my sister because she no longer is here to have a voice in this. She is not here to tell you what pain she has endured, the pain she, has, she endured that night and what suffering she underwent during those last moments of her life. She's not coming back. And for all these reasons, I firmly believe that it is imperative for an inmate to serve his full extent sentence and not be granted early release. Releasing him at this time would just impose a significant risk for the safety of my family and would not be at the best interest for the community. I'm requesting that the next one year be delayed as long as, as the law allows. It has been really weird. years to, to pay for his crime, but the victim's family and loved ones were given a life sentence. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. High Street, it, uh, it's appropriate this time that you be allowed to make a statement to the board for the decision being made. No, no ma'am. He said he's not making a statement. Okay. No, ma'am. I don't have a statement. Okay. So today we um, interviewed you, Mr. High Street. We have um, 
um, heard from the Pearl Project, um, we've heard from your offenders. Um, at this time, I believe without any further statement from you that it's time to vote. Um, we're gonna go to Mr. Prater first. Okay. Um, because of the victim statements, because of a number of things, the crime, how it was committed, length of time it took to call anyone, call the ambulance or anything like that. Uh, the fact you had a reduced charge and the fact that you just recently got into, I say recently in the last couple of years, gotten into a little bit of a problem there and removed from the, from the uh, barracks, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, because of all those reasons, but mainly because of the impact you've had on the nine people I'm looking at right here, uh, I'm up to the nine. Mr. Furman. Okay, um, due to the uh, strong victim opposition, uh, and you have not, in my opinion, served enough time for this offense, only serving half of your time, so my vote is to deny. Um. Sir, I concur with my um, colleagues today. Um, your vote has, I mean, your parole has been denied. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. 